Well, good morning guys or whatever time it is wherever you are i just got finished making some biscuits this morning so i can keep these in a little biscuit warmer for the guys so when they get hungry throughout the day they can just snack on them i made some cinnamon raisin biscuits which my youngest son loves and then i made some regular biscuits for the other guys so i just got these in the mail i was so excited because my grandmother had one of these whenever i was little so when you have leftover biscuits, you can just put them in there and then the guys usually snack on them throughout the day. So I was so excited to get that. So I wanted to show you guys what we're gonna have in an upcoming video. I'm not sure when we'll do it, but just keep a watch out. We have two butcher blocks there and we have some corbels or brackets, whatever you wanna call those things right there. And we're gonna take these and we're gonna make an island with them. Right where that table is, is where our island's gonna go. So I'm excited about that. All right, as y'all can see, I've got my potatoes laying here, or as we say, our taters. And I'm gonna show you guys how my grandmother and my aunt Lil used to store these. If you don't have a root cellar or anywhere to put them, um, I'll show you that on another video. So y'all be sure to check it out. So I'm fixing to start shucking this corn and I'm gonna can the corn. And normally you would shuck this outside, but yesterday when me and my mom was doing it, cause I went over and helped her do her corn, um, the yellow jacket started getting after us. So I said, I'm gonna do it in here on a tarp and then I'll take the shucks and silk and all and the cobs and I'll take them and feed to my cow and my chicken. No waste with any of the corn. We'll be eating it, the chickens will be eating it, and the cows will be eating it. So another thing I wanted to show you that you might need for this is several big bowls, and then your knife to cut the end of the corn off. And also you might need the knife if you see like where a worms ate, you'll just cut that part out and then use the rest of it. Now we've got the corn silked and shucked. We're gonna rinse it off now. Okay, so I set up over top of the tarp just so that I don't make such a mess. All right, we're fixing to cut the corn off the cob. Yesterday, whenever I helped my mom, I told my dad, I was like, we need something to help us do this quicker. So he went and made us a little board and cut a hole. You gotta make sure to sand that down so you don't get any wood shavings. But I use it with this little thing. I put it right there with the teeth part pointed up. Let me slide some of this over here. And then I got a lag bolt, cut the top of it off there as you can see. Now we just put it in our drill. And tighten it up. And now we're ready to go. First of all, you're just gonna drill this into the corn. And then, there you go. Now, you're gonna just push it in here. You gotta hold this little thing. So now you put it in here, and then you just turn it. You can go in a couple of times. And if you squeeze this little thing closer, then it'll juice the corn a little bit more. So if you wanna make like cream corn, it really helps with that. Then you just back it out. Throw that cob over here on the tarp for the cow. Okay. 
always rig this off because yesterday at mom and dad's I didn't hold this um, corn cutter and when I went to do it with the drill it slung corn everywhere so you always want to hold it and go ahead and rake the corn off because I lost a lot of corn whenever I did that because it slung it everywhere This makes doing corn a lot quicker. Make short work out of it. tool that I like to use besides this is this little thing and it comes together like that but I just took that off and I put it right here and hold it I'll let you watch me do this and then you can just barely tilt it to each side because it doesn't get as tight around the corn as this one does. Now when you get done and you still have a little bit of corn like that right there, you can just take and hold this thing and get every little bit of corn off of it right there. Got a little bit up here too. So either one of these tools work good. Now we're going to put the corn into the jars. You want to leave about a half an inch head space. Now if you've got some that's a little, let me walk around and show you guys. If you've got some that's a little dry up here, you might want to go ahead and put some water in it. That's what I do. And then put a little salt on top and then put your lids and rings on it and put it in the pressure canner. All right, so now I'm gonna wipe the rims off. All right, so now I've washed my lid and I'm gonna put the lids on, tighten the rings. So now we're going to go put these in the canner. The quart jars are in the canner. We're going to pressure them for 85 minutes at 10 pounds pressure. Now to pressure pint jars, it takes 55 minutes at 10 pound pressure in the canner. 